Hey guys, this is Chris from DJ Tech Tools, also known as Flash Flutter on the internet, and today we're going to be talking about the Vestax VCI 400 SE Ian Golden Edition and explain the new Tractor version 2 mapping, and which also uses new firmware, which is also the version 2 MIDI firmware for the VCI 400 SE. So to get started, you're going to want to go to maps.djtechtools.com, and there then you can then Search under here for controllers, find your 400 SC, download a mapping, um, either from DJ Tech Tools or Flash Flutter. They're currently the same thing, but were different in the past. And then you'll, whoops, don't, not here quite yet. Then you'll get this zip file in that. Once you unzip that, you'll go to this folder. You'll have a mapping guide, a TSI file, which you'll import into Tractor, and a firmware zip file. Once you unzip that, you'll get this. And you'll go into it, you'll have a program, uh, some instructions on how to do it, and the firmware files. Now, unfortunately, right now, the firmware updater is only for PC, so you're going to need to get hold of a PC if you have a Mac to do it. But the steps are really easy. It literally takes you two minutes uh, at most if everything goes right. Um, in, unless maybe it's the first time using a PC and you need to make sure some drivers are set up and it's it's reading it correctly, which if you have the CD in your VCI 400 box, that can be really helpful. Otherwise, you'll want to go to Vestax's site and maybe download some of those things um, from their support. So assuming you've gone in here and done that, it's all easy. You just got to put in the bootloader mode by holding these when you press it on. Um, and then it's uh, literally a couple steps. So let's assume we got the firmware on here. Sweet. So now we're up to Tractor. So you're going to want to open Tractor, which I have open already, and you're going to want to import the mapping. So how we're going to do that, we're going to go into the preferences, and then we have this box over here, and we're going to go press the import button. We're going to find the mapping, which I have on the desktop, um, I think here, version 2.1.1, current version, you're going to do that, you're going to press open. And you want both of these. This is the mapping. This is the effect settings because we have a little bit different than the default tractor effect settings. Once you do that, you should see two mappings load into the controller manager, regular and add on. You need to make sure the import and the out part are both set to VCI 400. It might be named something differently uh, depending on what computer you have. We just need to make sure they're both assigned for both mapping files or else it won't work. So we got that all going well. Now we're just going to dive into the mapping and talk about some of the features. But before that, briefly, I want to talk about the version 2 firmware. And if you're wondering, hey, I have version 1, I'm fine with my mapping, why do I want this? Well, watch the video to see what's different in the mapping. But to explain what's different in the MIDI, say if you want to make your own mapping or play with it yourself, it's changing. Before, there used to be a lot of extra MIDI sent out in these sections that's now removed to make it much easier to MIDI learn the buttons, where before they had time delayed um, extra notes in there. And now, all of the level faders, crossfader, and the filter knobs are going to send out super MIDI, which means they're sending out extra CCs and notes, which you can map to whatever you want. In this case, they're mainly mapped to effects based things. So that's what's new in the MIDI firmware. And in case um, you're confused about it, the firmware on the VCI 400, both regulars and SEs, are separated for their MIDI and their audio. So you can update the MIDI firmware, it's not going to do anything to your audio. You can update your audio firmware, it's not going to do anything to the MIDI. They're separated. So um, other thing to note is if you, when you go through the whole update process, if you already have the standalone audio mixer firmware on this, you're going to want to probably revert to the original audio firmware as a precaution as, some, as a couple people have had some weird issues they're all fixable and uh, if you have one hit up DJTT support as soon as possible but it just um, it's a precaution to make it easier when you're updating the firmware so now that we've got that all done we're going to talk about the mapping uh, break down each section and go through it so in this upper section we're controlling effects mainly and also loop decks which is basically um, a way of calling a remix deck. So these buttons are going to toggle to control what you're controlling. This is going to be effects 1, this is effects 3. Over here we have 2 and 4. They're real straightforward in that these buttons, I mean the knobs, are going to control um, your values up here. You can see in effects 1. This is always going to be the dry wet on any of them, the encoder. 
and then the buttons are going to turn things on. Same for single effects as you can see in two, and it's all cool. A couple other things you can do if you want to change the effects on the fly, you can press shift, turn the knobs on the group effects, it's going to change them to anything. On a single effect, press shift, and you're going to want to rotate the encoder to change it. That's all good. Um, the other thing, which is a feature a lot of people ask for, which I added in, is effects presets. So now if you press shift and any of these buttons, it's going to trigger effects presets. You can see it changing between. It's the same for single effects. These are just some things um, I picked that either I like, or in the case of the grouped effects, that I took all the old settings from the VCI 100 for any of you guys who have been here. Uh, that long um, and they're just there uh, for you to use. And if you want to change them to edit them to be your own custom effect settings it's really easy and I'm going to show you how. So you're going to want to open your preferences again, go into your controller manager, in the second part of the mapping and there had to be two because it's uh, really complex. Actually we have to split it into three pretty soon but uh, you're going to want to go to the mapping add-on section and you're going to want to sort by comments, um, and then you're going to go to the top, um, and you'll see there's all these underscore effects one preset on this or all this stuff. So you're going to want to go select one of these. It's really easy. You just have to change the effects. So you can see in effects one preset one. We have reverb, we have digital lo-fi, and we have gator. And you can just change those to be whatever you want. And just to prove, well, it's already there, but let me prove it to you. Let's see if I press this, effects one, preset one, it goes reverb, digital, lo-fi, gator. Cool. So if you want to control a loop deck though, or a remix deck, all you gotta do is press shift and either of these buttons and they will both light up. And that signifies you're controlling loop decks C or D on either side, um, which is a remix decks, but we're calling them loop decks because this functionality is designed to control loops in the loop deck. So when you have this here, you can see we're controlling C these are going to control the, uh, the, the volume of the clip that you're selecting. And then these buttons are going to turn, are going to play that section and you know, mute and unmute it from there on. So let's, and you can see they light up when you press them and when they turn on, what we have going on, pretty cool. Just turn them off and the extra thing, if you do want to stop them all, you can always press shift and push this in and it's going to stop them all. So that's for controlling loop decks and next uh, extra nice functionality, but also giving you as much effects control as possible. If you want to get out of it, it's really easy Just press either of these buttons and you'll go to control that effects. So that's what's going on up here. For the loop section, it's pretty straightforward. This is a loop move, um, which is a loop move based on your loop length. And then this is, uh, you know, your loop length, your loop control. And then when you're having this, this is going to move the loop when it's activated. Um, and you'll also shift in this. this one of my favorite things. It's going to scrub through and move the loop a little bit, which can be really, really helpful. So another thing that you can do here, which is uh, something some people ask for, is you can control the master tempo. Say if I'm playing a track. And I want to change the master tempo. Maybe I'm syncing, not using auto and syncing everything to master. You can, oh, whoops, well, I gotta get this guy on master. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. So you can see I can now control the master tempo by pressing shift in this knob. That's a little extra thing. It's kind of cool. All right, so that's about it for the loop section. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go through the performance grid real quick. Um, in the slicer section, it's what we used to be calling. It's what originally was in the grid section in the V1 VCI 400 mapping. It's what we're calling kind of sample slicer, what we used in some of the MIDI, MIDI Fighter decalize mappings. It was in the original VCI 100 mapping. Um, and what it's basically going to do is going to use a slicer to uh, cut up and kind of rephrase whatever track you're doing and you can create a virtual loop out of it so if i play this i can kind of you can hear it's kind of slicing that and if you want to say uh keep anything all right that's bugging me so do that um 
Then all you're going to do is press shift and one, or slice through them, which is going to do the same thing. And it's going to create a virtual loop. And it's also going to set a real loop so you don't lose your place in the song. And then you can kind of press these to go through different slicer values and you can go out of it just like that. So the gratify is real straightforward. It's basically like the the middle two rows of the MIDI fighter um, decalized or instant gratification mapping. Whereas, um, so you have your beat mashers and then oh, master again. Then you have uh, reverb, filter, delay, and echo freeze. And the nice thing about the Echo Freeze is that it's going to blink to light up to let you know that it's on. So say you fade out and you forget to turn it off, it's right there blinking in your face so you don't forget. So you can turn that off. Then the Q section is real straightforward. This is a Q point. You know, set some other Q point. You can delete it uh, with Shift or that. They'll act the same. Now I'll go into the Grid section, which is the most changed from any of them. And uh, we'll show that, well... One of the things I'll show is this button is going to set the tempo to be master, so that's cool. You can do that. These are going to nudge the tempo up and down. You can see um, maybe you just want to do some really small movements and don't want to mess with your tempo fader. These are some tempo bend controls. Say if you want to use it instead of the outer jog wheel. And then you have these buttons which are going to have and double the tempo, which can be really helpful sometimes. So let's turn it to 70 or... 280 kind of crazy. Um, and the last button up here is a new thing for a tractor 2.5 and higher, um, which is flex mode. So when you press it on, it's going to blink again to remind you because it's important and something if you forget could be disastrous. So as you may or may not know, flex mode lets allows you to kind of manipulate the track or, or say with cue point scratching or whatever. And when you stop, it's going to jump to where you were in the song. So if I'm playing it. I'm scratching and stuff. You can see then it's going to go to where the green bar is going. Same with if I uh, it's a Q point go to the beginning, it's going to come right back. So then uh, you can just turn it off like that. It's real easy and it can be real helpful. So that's pretty much it for the performance grid section. Now we're going to go down here to the bottom four buttons, which change based on these three tabs you have. And on the left we have Q1 to 4, loop, and jog effects. Those are no longer really what they're doing because they duplicated a lot of functionality, so kind of changed things based on what the community asked for and some um, ideas I had. So in this first one, this is the biggest change. Q1 to 4 is now what I'm calling cross-fader effects, and this is fusing some ideas from the VCI 100 fader effects mode. It's also taking inspiration from the MIDI Fighter Pro Beat Masher um, and just some other ideas I had. And what that's going to be doing is controlling effects with a crossfader, a level fader, and a filter knob. So it's uh, it's deck de it's side dependent. So if you're on the left side, you're going to be using the crossfader and the level fader on D and the filter on D. Whereas if you're on the right side, you're going to be using the crossfader again, but then the level fader on C and the filter knob. And I'll explain that in a second. It'll make sense. So um, if I, there's four different modes which are going to trigger different effects and what it's going to do is say well, let's just play this in the background um, when you're on one this is going to turn on some effects when you move it from the fur furthest left point on effects one and when you get to the end it's usually going to trigger an effect either when you're there or sometimes all the way when you go back Um, and then this is going to be controlling effects in effects 3 when you go down. So as you saw there, the filter knob is actually going to modulate the effects you're controlling by this. You can kind of play them together, or if you have really good hands, you can play all three together. And so that's going to be the same for the first three. They're all controlling effect, grouped effects in 1 and 3, so I'll show quickly. So you already heard that then. So let's give me some, give me some more time in the song. All right, let's get me a beat so you can hear something. All right, 
And we have All right, so that's all the same for the first three, and the fourth one is the only one that's different in that it's gonna control effects two, and it's gonna control a single effect, in this case, the slicer, to kind of do some kind of beat repeat kind of sound. And if you wanna add some noise, you can use this knob. Can be really expressive uh, once you get used to it. And then the other thing is this knob here. If you turn it right, it's going to turn on the um, uh, slight or the stretch. So say I'm making some effect sounds and I want to fade out, especially fitting the song is about to end. And you can hear some noises and stuff. And this is really can be nice as an outro or to kind of you know blend between tracks with different tempos or whatever. Because I can do this. The effect is still on, so I'm going to want to turn that off or you can hear noise and then. And you get back to the middle, it turns off. So that's it for crossfader effects. You can turn them on and off like this, and then they're going to you know, give you back controls normally of the filter and level faders. But they are also the soft takeover, so um, I am actually in the same position. But say I, st I change it when I was in the middle, and then um, once I got into the... Um, once I got out of the mode, I want to move it, but I don't want the crossfader to jump. It's on soft takeover, so it's not going to move until they're aligned, and then it'll move again for you. So no worries on that. But as I mentioned, for, Bex, for decks B and D in this mode, you're going to be using the same but opposite with, with C in this, and that's because you want the crossfader position to be something uh, for that deck that's appropriate, and also just for ergonomics, you can use them. So that's pretty cool. It's a fun new thing. Uh, what's, what used to be loops is now macro jog effects. So um, here I'll show that on the other page or on the other side. So let's say we're playing a track. Um, and now when you press them, they're going to turn on a macro jog effects for, for um, uh, with the jog wheel. So it's going to be basically when I touch it, it's going to activate an effect. And then you have macro jog effects don't make any sound when they're at 50%. So you're going to want to, uh, so then it's going to kind of easily fade in and out. And there's four different sounds. A grand phase, laser slicer thing. And then you have a it's kind of basomatic sound. And then a stretch. You know, if you want to get out of them, uh, you can't press the button, you have to press shift in them, and then you have your jog wheel back again like normal. So that's that. Then you have jog effects, which is the last mode. Um, that's all the same as it used to be. Let's give you a quick demo of that. Um, and that's just going to be different sounds. This used to be the echo freeze once you moved up. It's now this delay reverb thing I made, which is nice. You have a nice tail on it. And then the usual flange, a kind of gator beat masher, and another one. So that's all as expected. That's all the same. Only things after that we're going to talk about is the loop recorder, uh, which is controlled up here, and it's meant to very much mimic how it looks in Tractor. So these buttons here, C and D, are usually going to be your snap and quantize. You can see they're turning on and off. They'll light up. That's all cool. Um, and if I want to change the loop length, or the loop recorder length, I press shift and either of these and it's going to move the length up and down. So let's say four is good for me. I'll play this track. Um, and let's say I just want to record a loop. So this is mirrored to these. So this is record and this is play. So I'll just take a, there you go. So we're recorded now. You can see it was blinking as it was recording. If I want to overdub again, I can press this to keep on going, but you'll want to know that it's not going to stop after one cycle, it's going to keep on going, so the blinking is helpful and you'll want to know to turn that off. So I have something recorded in here now, if I want to blend it in as an equal source, I'm going to move this to around like 50% you can hear both 
the loop deck and what's going on, but if you turn it all the way to 100%, it's gonna totally take over. I can stop the track. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, so you can play and stop it, or you can then delete it by pressing Shift and B. So that's a loop recorder. Um, you also have some basic effects routing here. You have effects one and two, as you can see, but since we have so much control, you're gonna wanna use three and four. Not now you can press shift and the LEDs will change to show you three and four of the deck. So I can turn on C and D and that's real helpful. Uh, besides that, there's uh, not much else has changed. The browse is still the same. You can open the browse, go through stuff here, press shift or yeah, press shift in this to, to go through your trees and you can open and close things with that, pushing that in. If you want to go through your favorites or your crates, you can push this down and go through here, find something like save a trap, something like that. Um, that's pretty much all, all that um, that you need. So this is pretty much explained what's going on now in the Tractor Pro mapping for the VCI 400 SE. This is the version two mapping using version two firmware. If you have any comments or questions or ideas, please feel free to hit me up on maps.djtechtools.com um, or just find me on the internet somewhere, but those are the best places so we can collect information for the mapping. I use this as my main tool of DJing, so I'm always updating it and open to all ideas at all times. So feel free to share your ideas. Uh, but hopefully you learned a little bit about the VCI 400 SC, a little bit about the new tractor mapping, and um, Hopefully it helped you if you have a unit, or if you don't, you know, showed you some cool things that this really powerful controller can do. So hopefully you enjoyed that a little bit. I'm going to sign off right now. Again, this is Chris from DJ Tech Tools, also known as Flash Flutter. Um, and thanks for taking time to uh, watch and listen. Until later, see ya.